After completing your installation of CData on your computer, head over to Excel and open it up to where you will have access to the new CData tab at the top and then choose your data source. Here we're going to do QuickBooks Desktop. When you click on this, a new pop-up is going to be displayed, which is where you have the ability to add on new connections if you're doing multiple company files. Select the drop-down, choose New, and you're going to do a connection name. Now the connection name, I recommend matching the name of the desktop file that you're going to be working with for reference later. So we'll just call this QB Demo for the moment. Then you also have some additional features like the enabled operations, update, insert, and delete. Because you have the ability that you can actually store the connection within the workbook, these become important in case you want to disable like the delete feature to avoid somebody accidentally deleting stuff who does not know how to work the pro program. Additionally, you'll find there's more settings that can be done through uh, to, to provide you the tools the way you would need them. Um, the application name should remain the same. That is actually letting the program know that it's going to be using the CData adapter to connect to QuickBooks desktop this time. Now the company file, you can choose this to map directly to the file location. The other areas that I've always found to be important and useful would be going in and taking a look, of course, at the offline. Generally, you want to have that set to false. That is stating whether it's going to pull the data from cache and be available offline or if it should actually try to pull new, fresh data. So I leave it to false. I also will come into here with the logging. You can actually choose where you want the log file to go. So if you're a new user, this is great if you run into errors or have difficulties getting things imported. It will track the, the challenges that you're having and you could read through it to kind of learn where the issues are. But the program also does a great job of dem, uh, displaying that as you're going along. The verbosity level has to do with how detailed that log file is in case you need to use it. Now miscellaneous is some good stuff. Uh, the connect directly. Connect directly is it's a Boolean indication of whether you wish to connect directly to QuickBooks or not. Um, you also have the ability for your custom fields here. Um, this is going to you choose between how you want the custom fields to be displayed, whether it's through XML or JSON, or JSON I should say. Um, include line items and include linked transactions. So this is important if, when you're selecting like the invoices tab, there is a different option for invoice line items. If you choose this to be on false, when you pull invoices, it will not uh, also pull the individual line items. You would have to go to the invoice line items option to be able to, to pull that, those details. And I'll show you that in another video. Um, your QB XML version. This gives you the ability to choose which XML version that you would be using. I've always set it to default, but there are times when certain levels are required uh, more than others. Read-only makes it to where you really enforce the fact that it's only read-only, so you're only pulling data and nobody can write to it. Um, then your remote connection. If you're doing your connections on the same computer, it's not necessary to set these uh, values. However, if this is going to be used in a server type environment, you'll want to refer to the user guide to, to get some extra details to set this up correct. And then finally, your schema location. If you set up special reporting or special SQL query calls, they will be saved to a specific location that can then be used across different companies or different connections. So it's always a good practice to come into here and choose to set this. I personally have always gone into my own name, go into documents, and I just keep a C data folder there and always link it just like that. You can use one primary folder for all companies. You do not want to make individual folders for each company unless you want separate schema maps. The tables gives you the ability to limit which tables will be shown and which ones were not. And views would do the same concept, but for your reporting uh, views. 
once you have everything set up the way you would like, you can just click OK, ask you if you'd like to test it, say OK. It will then use the included remote desktop connection. Make sure you can connect OK. And now, with that information, you'd be able to come in and we'll, just for example, you could pull your chart of accounts. These are all different tables of information that can be pulled. Um, so your accounts, all of your bills. Now bills will have your bill expense items, your line items, your payments, your linked transactions to those for those payments. Uh, for inventory, you'd have build assemblies, which would be great. Of course, you have your items, everything else related to inventory. Um, check expenses, uh, checks, check line items. So if you have a check that's got split items and um, paying for multiple things, you can pull it up there. Uh, company info, we'll pull that one real quick. And when we do a poll, we've chosen the table review we want, the max rows, something like this really should only have one on it, of course. But then you have in the columns here, you can choose which columns to include and which ones not to. If you select the checkbox, any the unique ID, of course, will always be marked. And there are certain ones that will be considered read only where you will not be able to modify them at all. Um, you can also change the sheet name so it changes at the bottom. So we'll go company info. And that's one way you can keep pulling more and more information of it. You can also choose where you want this to start. So let's say 25 just because. We'll click OK. So now you can see the information start at 25, full name, and, it, and that is the basic information of that company file. Now, all of these details are available through CData's website, and they do a great job breaking out all of the data tables. Um, it, it's a little bit of reading, but it definitely is advisable to go through it when you're first getting started with the program. Thanks for watching our video today. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so we know and we'll keep making more content just like this. And as always, here's wishing you a very successful week.